I watched Gurren Lagann for the first time at a very critical point in my life when I also happened to have a newly found interest in analyzing the themes and messages of stories. Because of that interest, I came out of the show inspired to move forward with a lot of things that were going on at the time, and as I kept thinking about how its story could apply to my life and the world, it became my favorite anime of all time. But I've seen a few video essays about the show, and a lot of them are pretty good videos overall which make many good points complimenting the show, but there's one common point that I've found through a few of them, which is that certain decisions in the show would only be right in a world where spiral power existed. And that confused me because spiral power is real. A little over a year ago, I made what is now the most viewed video on this channel that I actually put effort into, and I was inspired to write that video because I was annoyed by how so many fans of Chainsaw Man seemed to focus on how it was a story where sad things happened and not on how it was one of the most inspiring stories I had ever read. A few months before that, I made one of my first video essays about Higurashi because seemingly no one had realized that the show was actually extremely wholesome and hopeful. The reason why people fail to recognize these obviously positive messages comes down to a problem in the way they consume media. Well, maybe I shouldn't call it a problem. The ways in which we experience art, the things we value most in art, and the things we look for in art are all subjective. They are different for different people, and so some will not focus on positive messages as easily as they will the complex systems of a world or unraveling mysteries, for example. I feel like this does become a problem, though, when not recognizing a story's messages leads to someone coming out with the opposite message of what the writer was trying to say. This is especially problematic with stories tackling important issues like self-worth, empathy, or even just not giving up. Failing to find the positive message in a show that deals with these can cause someone to have lower self-worth, become less empathetic, or give up more easily. Gurren Lagann does not come off as a show with an especially deep message to most people, and I think the main reason for that is that the core of the message is pretty obvious. It's another story about believing yourself and not giving up, another story where a little shy boy grows out of his shell to become an inspirational leader and gets the girl he likes. At face value, it doesn't seem original at all, it's just fun and has cool robots fighting. And it feels overwhelmingly positive most of the time, almost constantly yelling about fighting spirit and the power of humanity. Ideas that a cynical mindset will criticize as corny or obvious or unrealistic. I think I was someone who had that kind of mindset for a while. I was like the villains of the show, looking down on the hopeful idealists and the ideas they try to spread. To any TV show, movie, book, inspirational quote on my ELA teacher's board or Instagram post with a message like, never give up, I would cringe at how corny it was. Like, of course I shouldn't give up, of course I should believe in myself, of course I should try to change the world, I already know those things. I didn't engage with the media on its own terms, instead I actively challenged it and used it to criticize whatever I was looking at. But because of that, I failed to really internalize any of those messages. I had a YouTube channel before this one, I made like, kind of alternate history videos and stuff where countries would fight each other. And it did pretty well pretty quickly, but it didn't grow as fast as I expected and the lack of reward made me get burnt out. At some point, I decided to take a break while in the middle of working on a video. I was on break for a week, then a month, and now I haven't touched that channel in years. I got into politics at a really young age, and I followed candidates and elections up until Donald Trump got elected, and seeing the mass division and lack of understanding between the two sides greatly changed my perspective on the world. But it didn't drive me to help build the understanding that I wanted people to have. My conclusion instead was to give up on politics, and I stopped closely following it until fairly recently. I thought eventually I would figure out a normal career that I wanted to have, but that didn't really happen. Sure, there's some fields that I'm interested in, but really I never outgrew my elementary school dream of being a niche internet micro-celebrity. But I didn't follow that dream for so long because I didn't believe in myself. I thought I would have to get some normal job because it was impossible for me to succeed in any other way. But eventually, I did start this YouTube channel with my sister because I realized that if I wanted to reach the life that I wanted, I had to believe it could work. Similarly, what got me back into politics was deciding that I needed to create the change that I wanted to see. I can't give up on people, I can't let myself believe that they will never be able to better understand each other, 
or change their worldviews, because if I don't believe that they can get better, then I will never put in the effort necessary to successfully make them better. If you do not believe even a little bit that you can succeed, then you never will. Gurren Lagann is the embodiment of that realization. It is literally a struggle against the idea that we are doomed to fail, or that we can't change for the better, or that it is wrong to desire more, as these ideas are central to the ideologies of all the show's antagonists. The core messages of Gurren Lagann in their simplest form are, believe in yourself and believe in humanity, messages which have been stated in countless stories throughout history. But what makes Gurren Lagann different is its presentation. It takes those messages to the biggest scale ever, and it presents those messages in the context of a battle against literal despair. Characters feel like there is no way out of their situation, but eventually they find hope, and through that hope they find a drive to change their lives and the world around them for the better. And that drive created from hope is power, in the form of spiral energy. Though, there's also a little twist of nuance that Gurren Lagann adds to itself which makes it more real than other stories with similar messages, and that's the idea that spiral energy could also destroy the universe. Our drive to progress and succeed is a great thing that has advanced us to once unimaginable levels of development, but sometimes this spiral power can be used for the wrong things or in the wrong way, and it can hurt not just the world or other people but ourselves. We shouldn't seal off our spiral power because it's something that could benefit everyone, but at the same time we shouldn't let it run too wild, because then we might destroy everything that we built with it. Additionally, spiral power isn't something that lets our heroes win every battle instantly. If the world's struggles were determined solely by your belief in yourself, then Kamino would never have died. But the show realistically depicts him as reckless, because he's dumb and doesn't really understand everything. He had the most drive to succeed, but he wasn't someone who could plan very well, and his lack of realistic plans and goals is a flaw, and Simone is able to grow into a better leader than him because of how he is able to collaborate with and take on the ideas of others. With that nuance, Gurren Lagann turns its childish idealism into a warning. That spiral power, the drive to progress and believe in oneself and humanity, is the most necessary force in the universe, and can be turned into the most powerful one, but can also be extremely harmful if it is unrealistic and not thought out, or if it is used towards the wrong goals. The problem is, there isn't a very clear line at which we can say it becomes harmful. Just like in real life, the benefit or harm of humanity's goals and actions can be very subjective. It is our responsibility to figure out where we think the line is, and that can be scary. But the line certainly isn't where Lord Genome or the Anti-Spirals drew it, and that's because Gurren Lagann believes we aren't that stupid. We aren't stupid enough for their methods to become necessary. So you should watch out, but most of the time it is fine to let your spiral energy run free. The stories we read, watch, and listen to tell us to believe in ourselves not because success is a guaranteed product of believing in yourself, but because believing in yourself is necessary for success. You will not be dedicated enough to reach your dreams if you do not believe you can attain them. Believing that you will succeed is simply a tool needed to succeed in the same way that spiral power is a tool, because they are the same thing. The existence of spiral power doesn't make the team win every battle, but it was necessary for them to win. Spiral power is metaphorical. We don't have magical green juice in real life, but that doesn't mean we can't achieve anything we want to. It doesn't mean that Gurren Lagann doesn't apply to real life. Spiral power is a metaphor for the human drive to succeed, progress, and change for the better. A drive that has brought us from caves to space, and in that sense might as well be magic. And yeah, that's a really corny idea, but I think sometimes it's just fun to embrace corniness. Sometimes you just need a show that tells you to believe in yourself and that everything will turn out great if you do. Gurren Lagann is the perfect story for that, but it can only succeed if you view it from the metaphorical side and without a cynical lens. Embrace the absurdity and you'll realize that your drill really is the drill that will pierce the heavens, because spiral power is real. Metaphorically.